allowed some certain things to happen just so, 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 so he can prove whether I'm faithful to him or not. And so I really believe that this message that I'm about to speak to you today is a mana from heaven. Like it is sufficient for the day. Like, like, don't even worry about tomorrow because his word says that lilies don't toil wondering what they're going to wear or wondering what they're going to eat. But sufficient for today is today. And, and so, so I pray that your hearts are open to receive the mana that the Lord has for you uh, uh, this morning. Uh, we've opened up a new message series titled Stronger. Somebody flex your name and say, that's getting bigger. Come on, say, that's getting bigger. Yeah, for the next nine weeks, we're going to talk about certain areas in our lives that we need to to build and to strengthen. And, and I am passionate. I, I know I'm passionate every Sunday, but there's something even more passionate about me today. Uh, I was in my daily devotions and I came across the book of Proverbs and the book of Proverbs says this, that they that forsake the law praise the wicked. Think about that. Think about the state of our country. They that forsake the law praise the wicked. Isn't it interesting that the things that are being celebrated don't come in alignment with God? Isn't it interesting that every time you turn on the TV, the things that are being celebrated are not in alignment with God's way, God's purpose, God's will. Why? Because more and more people are forsaking the law. More and more people are forsaking the assignment, the purposes, the plans, the provisions, and the guidelines of God. And then and the word of God says is this, that because lawlessness shall abound, somebody say lawlessness will increase. Uh, are oh, you ain't ready? <laughs> somebody say lawlessness will increase. So Jesus said, because lawlessness shall abound, the love of many would wax cold. That means they're not loving anymore. They're cold-hearted folks. But he who endures to the end, someone would say, that's getting stronger. Yeah, he who endures to the end, someone would say, that's getting stronger. He who endures to the end will in the end be saved. you got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might in order to endure lawlessness in today's time. you got to be strong in the Lord. How do I get strong, man? We open up this message series, and we're going to focus on First, Second Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. And in this scripture, the Lord reveals eight areas, eight steps, eight levels that, that we ought to work on to strengthen ourselves completely in the Lord. And let's read it. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. On a count of three, let's read. Give me a thumbs up, and you are ready? Ah! Okay, which reminds me, hey guys, read your Bibles every Sunday. Read, read, read your Bibles. Because my, the, the screen is not big enough for those folks on the outside. So next week, read your Bibles. Uh, so I'm going to be reading from New King James Version, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 to 8. And on account, on account of three, let's read it. Ready? Kasi, dua, kolo, say. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren, sorry, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the next slide, it gives us eight areas in our lives that we need to work on. Faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. And today, the Lord has released me today to speak to you about step number one, faith. The title of this sermon is called, When God Calls You Out. When God calls you out. Will you answer him? Will you say, here I am, Lord? Will you step out of your comfort and begin to contend for the kingdom? Will you say, I am here? Will you step out in faith? Will you forsake all others for the kingdom of God? Will you deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus? Will you do that? When God calls you out, what you doing? Are you stepping out in faith? Or are you allowing fear to paralyze you from moving to new levels in Christ Jesus? Now, I want to start off by saying this, this main bullet point, it states this, stronger begins with your faith in Jesus. Stronger begins with your faith in Jesus. If you play baseball and you, you hit the ball and try to go to play uh, uh, base number two, you disqualify. Why? Because you bypass base number 
number one. Struggle begins with your faith in Jesus. Let's look at the word begins. It means, it means it's the starting point. You cannot grow strong in the Lord without faith. This is, you cannot bypass it. You cannot skip level one. You, 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 you cannot forfeit all of his blessings. You're going to forfeit all of his blessings, his mercy, his grace, his favor, his empowerment when you bypass faith. All of your ministry flows from your intimacy with God. All of your ministry flows from your intimacy with God. Now, I'm not just saying ministry like, oh, you got to serve on media, or you got to serve in media. No, I'm talking about all of your ministry, like your relationship with your spouse, like your relationship with your children, Amen. like your relationship with your boss, like, you. like your relationship with your co-workers. All of your horizontal must flow from your vertical in Christ Jesus. Don't ever do the horizontal without first doing the vertical. People who do the horizontal, they burn out, they frustrated, they get angry, they allow life to speak louder than the truth. But when you do your vertical first, your vertical is like a conduit of ever living waters that never run dry. The reason why we get frustrated and upset at our spouses is because we're trying to do horizontal without first seeking the kingdom of God and doing the vertical. All of your ministry flows from your intimacy with God. Don't bypass it, y'all. Don't bypass it. Don't bypass it. Don't get a, a quick fix. It begins with your faith. Somebody say, it begins with faith. It begins with faith. Now I say, stronger begins with your faith. I can't fake it for you. I can't do it for you. This is the one thing where you have to take responsibility to do it for yourself. Amen. I can pray to God to move mountains, but I'm sorry, I can't pray for him to move your mountains. You, by faith, in your faith, have to believe it yourself. Mama can pray for me all she wants, but until I say yes to Jesus, I will always live empty, unsatisfied, bickering about life, allowing life to speak louder than truth. That's right. I can't do it for you. It begins with not Helen's faith, not the church's faith, not the pastor's faith. It begins with your faith. When God calls you out, will you say, are you pursuing him? Are you saying yes to Jesus? Now it says stronger begins with your faith in what? In Jesus. Do you know that you can have faith in other things? Like right now, you're having faith that that chair will hold you up. <laughs> like, Lord, have mercy, this chair hold me up. You can have faith in many things. The Word of God says some will trust in chariots and horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. You see, the word faith simply put is full trust in Jesus. Like, I can put my whole weight, I trust you, Jesus. That's what faith is all about. And so, so we as a people, we, we can have faith in many different things. We can have faith in the government. We can have faith in our jobs. We can have faith in our Toyota Tacomas. We can have faith in our careers. We can, we can have faith in our children. We can have faith in our parents. We can have all those things. We can have faith in our skills and our talents. We can have faith in our looks. Lord, have mercy. But every one of those things is going to fail you. There is only one that will never fail you. There is only one that will never fail you. That he promises to never leave you nor forsake you. And his name is Jesus. Out of all the things that you need to be faithful in, have faith in Christ Jesus. Listen, if you talk to me like, like, like I, I, I play basketball a lot. And, and lately I've been going to the, to the airport, to the old airport, playing shooting hoops. I'm horrible. I used to be good. <laughs> and I find that my skills and my talents are failing me. I'm probably the best 43 year old basketball player out there. But my skills are failing me. And don't even talk to me about my looks. Bruh, the older I get, the harder gravity works. Certain things are kind of just falling down. In the name of Jesus, Lord, have mercy. Those things will fail you. There's only one that promises that he will never fail you. 
You see, it's just not about having faith. It's the object by which you're having faith. That's right. You want your faith to be unshakable, unbreakable, immovable? Then enter your faith on Christ Jesus who does not change, who is unbreakable, immovable, unshakable. And begin with your faith in Christ Jesus. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Let's read this aloud. Hebrews chapter 11 is what's called the, 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 the chapter of faith. So Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, on our count of three. Ben, give me a thumbs up if you guys are ready. Oh, so sorry. Oh, see, don't have faith in, in, in the camera. <laughs> the camera will fail you all. Thank you so much. One of, the, one of the joys about doing, doing, doing life with, with our youth, if you guys didn't notice today, our youth is running the entire service. So yeah. Yeah. So we are media. Yeah. Talk about faith being tested. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, man. Thank you, Kanoa. So on a count of three, let's read this aloud. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, 1, 2, 3, 3. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if you're going to come to God, you have to have faith. You have to believe that what? That he is. That Jesus is. Well, Jesus is what? Oh, that Jesus is the unfailing object of my faith. That, that, that Jesus gave his life so that I could have mine. That his blood still stains the cross and it still speaks forgiveness. And that by the act of his love on the cross, I am a recipient of his grace and his mercy. That he is the sacrificial lamb that was offered for my sins. Right. That he is Jehovah Jireh, the provider. The Lord will provide a sacrifice. And he became a replacement for all the yucky that I've done. That's who he is. That he is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is my peace. While all hell is breaking loose in my life, if I get to have peace that surpasses all understanding. And it's not found in a place. It's found in a person. His name is Jesus. So can you imagine? 
much of living a life thinking that God is this distant God and that you're just supposed to obey his rules. And that he never wanted an intimate relationship with you. So that means that when bad breaks the rules, God is just going to say, oh, behold then, good for you. That's what you get. Waste time. So I grew up thinking that God was this distant God and I had to follow rules. And then I came to Las Vegas, yeah, out of all places to find the Lord. Yeah. Where sin is, grace abounds even more. Yeah, yeah. Vegas became like Saint City, not Sin City. Yeah, I found the Lord in the midst of garbage. <laughs> yeah, and so, so I go to this church and this little five foot four and a half Asian Japanese fella from Oahu is preaching the gospel, but he preaches the gospel in such a way where I was like, I can see myself in that sermon. I thought he went on Facebook, looked up my profile, and read my book. Every sermon that he was speaking was relevant to me. Like, I could see myself in the sermon. I could see myself in the scriptures. And then my eyes were open and enlightened. I was like, wait a second, God is not distant. He wants to have a personal, intimate relationship with me. Amen. And so he has an altar call, and he says, is there anybody in here that wants to say yes to Jesus? Open up their hearts. And I'm like, dude. I am tired of running. Listen, let me, let me just share with you the, the crazy dynamics that happened to me. You see, I would go to church on Sunday, feel good. Then from Monday to Saturday, let sin around me produce sin in me. Then on Saturday, like an addict, run back to church service to get my fill. Felt good on Sunday. Monday to Saturday, argue with the wife, kick the dog, break the laws. Monday and Saturday, let crazy around me produce crazy in me. Like an addict, run back to church on Sunday just so I could get my fix. And this became a constant cycle of me getting my highs on Sundays. You know why I went through this cycle? It's because I made it about church attendance. When the whole time it was the Lord that wanted to attend to my heart. Just 
come to church, this checklist, and say, oh, I feel good today, but then Monday and Saturday, fight, fatigue, tired, and frustrated. It wasn't until I allowed the King of all kings to come into my heart, it wasn't until then, my life would have been the same. And I said yes to Jesus. Listen, do you have a yes for me? Like, your yes means I'm tired of you. Your yes means, like, I'm forsaking all else. Your yes is like, I'm so tired of Satan having his way in me and my family and my children. I'm coming to you, Jesus. And so if you're taking notes, I want you to jot this down. Number one, a simple yes to Jesus is one of the greatest acts of faith. A simple yes to Jesus is one of the greatest acts of faith. This is where it all begins. You cannot have virtue and knowledge and self-control and peace in the Lord if you don't have the yes to Jesus. Do you have a yes for him today? In the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, and this, is, this is a famous scripture. Let's read it aloud on the count of three. Let's read one, two, three, read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. One of the reasons why I love the scripture is because it says this, for God so loved the world. That fact is like, ooh, I'm worldly. Yes, that's me. You see, what I know about God's love is that it doesn't say to me. He shows no partiality. He loves us all. His love transcends generations, nations, nationality. His love does not segregate. His love transcends through, through all of that. Just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean he loves me more than you. Amen. He loves you. And it says, whoever believes in him shall not perish. Do you have a yes for him? When he calls you out, do you believe in him? In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9, I love this, it states this. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9, the count of three, let's read it. One, two, three, read. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Okay, so when you say yes to, to Jesus, you are saved by grace through faith. Faith. Faith is the conduit that allows the grace of God to come into your life. Faith is the door. Let's just say that. Faith is the door that gives you access to come face to face with your creator. And so when you have faith to say yes, you open the door. But check this out. Someone said this to me. He said, Ben, the door of your heart, there's no knob on the outside. The knob is only on the inside. And Jesus is not going to open the knob for you. But he knocks. And your job as a people of God is to open the knob from the inside and allow Jesus to come into your heart. We are saved by His grace. And that, man, when you do that, whoo, like all of heaven's glory. Like heaven is no longer a destination. Like you became the destination of heaven. All of heaven's glory comes and lives and dwells in you. So, amen. And I pray and I hope that you have a yes to Jesus today when I'm done. Amen? Amen. I hope that you will eat this manna in the name of Jesus. When we close, I'm going to ask for your yes in Christ Jesus. Now, what I've learned about faith is just is, is, is we become, uh, 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 man, I, how can I say this without offending folks? <laughs> it often amazes me that this is a Christian nation, but more and more immorality is springing up. Right. What's happening? Maybe because we just think that it's a yes to Jesus and life is good. But when I say yes to Jesus, I'll help her through. Satan got more angrier. <laughs> and Satan started attacking everything. My life and my home. So I realized that the yes to Jesus in Jesus was loaded. But the yes in Jesus meant this. That Jesus was going to help you through. <laughs> that yes, you will be trying. I'm not saying that once you say yes to Jesus, everything's going to be good. You're going to look younger. Your skills are going to be even better. No, no. When I say yes to Jesus, things start falling apart. But he promises that he will be with you in the midst of your trials and tribulations. He will be with you in the midst of your fire. Amen. And so what I've learned about faith is just not a, a, a yes, like I said, yes to Jesus. 
I realized that faith has to be exercised. It has to be worked out. So jot this down, number two, if you're taking notes, write this down. Faith must be exercised. There's a, there's a scripture in the book of James, chapter 2, verse 19 to 20, that just blew my mind. And we're going to show it up here, James, chapter 2, verses 19 to 20. And once you get there, James, 2, 19 to 20. That James chapter 2, verse 19 to 20. <laughs> Thank you guys. All right, okay. Now this scripture blew my mind. On the count of three, let's read. One, two, three, read. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe. What? And tremble. But do you want to know, a foolish man, that faith without works is wow. There's more to this Christian Christian life than just a yes to Jesus. Just because we believe in Jesus doesn't mean that it's, that, that, that it's all good. Because even the demons believe. What? So faith just has to be more than just believing. If you want the fullness of faith, it has to come with exercising what you believe. Because faith without works is Dead. The fullness of faith happens when you believe and you exercise and you work out your salvation. Faith is like the muscles. When you exercise it, it gets bigger, it gets stronger. Muscles are crazy because the reason why they get bigger when you work out and you start hurting is that the muscle fibers are tearing. Now when you rest, like Wolverine, your muscle fibers <laughs> grow back and begin to, to like, like, grow into bigger muscle fibers. So it's almost like self-healing to get stronger. Same thing with faith. Your faith has to be tested. Yeah, it's going to hurt. I don't like lifting weights. It's going to hurt. It's going to be painful. But trust in the Lord that the Lord is working something even greater and stronger in you. Faith is like a muscle. should be exercised. Now, a mentor of mine, you guys probably know him, uh, Pastor Wayne Cordero. He said this statement that like just shook my world. And the statement is this. Faith is a catalyst for action, not a replacement for it. Faith is a catalyst. Faith should naturally flow into you exercising it, but don't ever use faith to replace your action. Like say for example, like say for example, this is an amazing young woman, what's, what's your name? <laughs> Can I get your number? Okay. Say for example, I've never met her. And I had the hunts for her. Right? Now, I can stand here and say, I believe I'm going to marry that woman. I believe I'm going to marry that. I believe it with all my heart. 100% I believe I'm going to marry this woman. I believe it. And then I go to Helen. I said, hey, you want to marry me? You know what she's going to say? You're going to be great. I don't know you. Until I take Helen out on a date. Go cattle with her. Cooked some loud loud. Last, last about two weeks ago, I, I went fishing at the uh, tsunami buoy, just 35 miles out. Never done fishing 35 miles out of the shore. Uh, but man, I was there, I bought a whole bunch of fish. I, I got a whole bunch, not buy but I got a whole bunch of fish. I got some aku, I got some ahi, got some mahi mahi. And, and you know what? Man, if you want to get to heaven's heart, seafood. <laughs> so, so. I, I landed on the dock, I was watching the boat, I called her up, I said, hey, I got some fish for you. <laughs> so she comes over and I give her all this fish. Now, I don't just give her the fish, you know what I did? I also clean the fish. So I go home and I was cleaning the fish, cutting the fish. You used to see my wife, she was taking selfies, like, look at my man. Taking photos of me cleaning the fish. Yeah, I'm like, baby, you have having sashimi tonight. <laughs> cleaning the fish. She was all happy. Now, take her out on dates, lobster, filet mignon, filet mignon. And it's in the process of, of, of me courting her, exercising what I believe, that when I asked her hand in marriage, she said, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what Jesus meant when he said making fish is a man. <laughs> I love fish. <laughs> yeah. and 
So, so, so listen, I can believe all I want, but until I act my beliefs, until I act on my faith, until I work it, work out my salvation, I will never get the promise and the blessing of having her as my wife. Faith should never be a substitute for action. In fact, the fullness of faith should prompt you to work out your salvation. Amen? So it's like going to the gym. You could go to the gym all you want, sit down, look in the mirror and say, I believe I'm going to get buffed. I believe it. I believe I'm going to get buffed. The entire week, all you do is go and sit at the gym. I believe I'm going to get buffed. I believe it, Jesus. You could, you could, you could anoint the place. You could cast out demons in the place. You could fast. You could pray. But until you pick up the weights, bro, you're not getting buffed. <laughs> And so faith has to be exercised. So what, what I got here is, I just want to just quickly mention three faith, three things that will build your faith muscle. Three things that will build your faith muscle. So number three, build faith muscle by wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Have you ever waited for somebody? And they were late. What manifests when, we, when you wait for someone and they're like, anger, frustration, you want to throw them with a rock, right? That's not, that's not what this is. Wait on the Lord. In the book of, of, of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, let's read it aloud. One, two, three, read. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not Okay, so this waiting is not like waiting for somebody to come pick you up and like, where are they at? Man, what you doing? Just waiting on the Lord. <laughs> Wait, waiting on the Lord. Uh, man, what you doing? Waiting on the Lord. Just, just waiting. Just waiting on the Lord. <laughs> what you doing, man? Just waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. Waiting. 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 Waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. Why are you coming late? Waiting on the Lord. He's late. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Listen, that's not this way. In fact, the word wait is from the Hebrew word kava. It's not what you think. Some of y'all, I ain't going to know. But kava. Like you're looking with hope for the return of Jesus. It's an active wait. It's not like a waiting on the Lord. It's an active wait. Like for example, I'm just giving give you a, for example. Like when you go to the restaurant and the hostess takes you to your seat and you sit down at your table, who comes to serve you? Waiter or waitress. Get it? And so this word wait on the Lord, it means like you are the waiter or waitress for the kingdom of God. You serve other people while you wait for Jesus. You serve other people while you wait. Jesus, you come in today. Okay, I'm going to keep serving other people while I wait for you. So you wait in expectation of his return. Now watch what Jesus said. He says, blessed is the servant that when I come back, find so doing, serving. On the Lord. You wait by serving Him through serving others. Somebody say amen. 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 So you build faith muscle by wait on the Lord. Here's another thing. Build faith muscle by, number two, believe it's changing. Believe it's changing. Now, now what do I mean by this? The human being can rise above anything except the quality of his thinking. Like, the human being can rise above pain, could rise above hurt, could rise above all crazy, but they can never rise above the quality of their thinking. If you believe you level one, don't ever expect to rise to level two. If you believe you're only a level three, don't ever expect to rise to level eight. You can only rise up to the level of your thinking. So let's break that cycle, exercise faith, 
faith and build bigger faith muscles by start thinking it's changing. What do I mean by that? My marriage is not there yet, but it's changing. What I'm going through is painful, but it's changing. I'm not there yet, Jesus, but it's changing. I'm sad today, but it's changing. I didn't get good grades, huh? but it's changing. My mom is angry at me, but it's changing. I'm not going to new levels now, but it's changing. And so you got to ask, what you are doing is you're speaking faith in the midst of your circumstances, and you're believing for greater and not settling for your current situation. Come on, somebody. So you got to believe it's changing. So I'm saying it's changing.
salvation call. Maybe you're here and you're feeling pain and Jesus is knocking on your heart. And I don't want to do communion without you. Here, let me just let me just say this. I I, I call my mom. My mom is is, is 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 sick. She's in Arizona giving her doctor's appointments. And I called her. Well, she called. I got texts by the two or three in the morning. And I called her back and said, "Mom, you alright?" So mom suffers from extreme paranoia and some dementia. And so she said, "I opened my Bible and." All I saw was, was you and your family. And then she goes, I started praying, Lord Jesus, come. How many of you guys have been praying that? Lord Jesus, come now. I'm like, Phew! Jesus, come now, please. And so she, she started praying, Lord Jesus, come now. But, but she said she received a word from Jesus that morning. And it was in Psalm 1 because Jesus is Psalm 1. I don't know if you guys know that. <laughs> When my mom said, Yes, we yes, I we are from the morning. Lord Jesus, come now, please. And Jesus responded to her in Psalm 1, because Jesus is Psalm 1. <laughs> he said to my mom, What that means is, hold on tight, wait. Not all of our family is home yet. And that changed my heart. How long suffering is God and how merciful is God that He's not shutting the door now. But He's saying, Oh, Chapel Corner, just wait. Not all of our family is home yet. Can you just hold on just a little longer while I stand at the door and wait for our family members to come home? Listen, I know we all have family members that have not said yes to Jesus. Some of our closest friends have not suggested Jesus. And your heart and my heart is like Jesus' heart is, man, I am not going to let Jesus close that door until every one of my family members has said yes to Jesus. Do you have a yes for him? Maybe you're the one person that he'd leave in that day and after you so that you can say yes to Jesus. Could you bow your heads with me? If there's anyone in here that has been stirred and Jesus has been knocking on your heart from the moment service started, I want to say this to you. Just like what Jesus said to my mom. Jesus is waiting for you to say yes. And if that's you, if you have a yes for Jesus today, and you want to accept him as your Lord and say, Father God, I pray that your spirit will be in this place. She touched our hearts, God. We open our hearts to receive you as our Lord and Savior. I yield this atmosphere to you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts.
some like that on the tent as well, my team. Thank you so much.